Hey guys, today's video is on a Howdy, and uh, this is not an Android head unit. It, in actual fact, is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto based. So who are a Howdy? <laughs> well, I actually have absolutely no idea, but they do have a few head units on Amazon, and uh, therefore, why not test them? I mean, that's what these videos are about, to see if uh, these products are any good. And, you know, if they put their products on Amazon, it generally means that they trust their own products, because we all know if you buy something on Amazon, you can just send it back if it's no good. So, so let's get this out of the box and uh, see what's in there. So here it is. Um, okay. Um, well, it rattles, which is the first time I've ever seen a head unit do that. Uh, appears to be something loose on the inside, and it is very light as well. So on the front here, we have capacitive touch buttons. We have an auxiliary 3.5 millimeter input, and we have a USB. And then up here we have a microphone and a reset button. And uh, on the back here, you've got a standard ISO connection, which is pretty cool. And then you've got a left and right audio output. These are the pre-outs. Normally you would have four, for one for each speaker in the car, but this one's only got two. And then you have two video outputs to like rear screens. You've got a video input and you have a camera input, probably for the reverse camera. And then over here you have the antenna input yeah, so um, that rattle makes me feel like this is not going to be very high quality. So I will reserve judgment until I have plugged it into the jukebox test station and had a play with it, uh, which is what we're going to do right now. Right, so I've connected it up now and um, a couple of positive things is because it uses ISO connections, these things here, uh, it was very, very easy for me to plug in. I literally just plugged it in and it's ready to go. So that's really great. Uh, the other thing is, of course, um, it comes with a reverse camera, which is a nice feature. So you don't need to buy one separately. So that's cool. Now, for those of you who are wondering what's going on here, uh, this is my jukebox test station and essentially it is uh, designed specifically uh, for testing head units. And um, that's what I'm going to do now. So. Uh, the power button imitates turning the ignition on on the car so we can see how long it's going to take to boot up. So let's do that now. Okay, so a Howdy car stereo. It's got the Amazon shop link directly there and an email for support as well. So that's uh, pretty cool. Okay. With direct line. Okay, there's no volume control anywhere, so I will just do it from here. Okay, I can't actually do that either. Nothing it's a good guess, it's not quite right. Right. <laughs> I, I'm to... sad, I think I know this. It's when... There's something else. Okay, so the first thing here is it goes straight to the radio as soon as it gets switched on, which is fine. Um, but what I did note is that there is actually no way to turn the radio off. None of these buttons stops the radio. Now, it, on an Android head unit, if you're done with the radio, you just hit the back button and it stops because you essentially turn the app off. On this, you can't actually turn the radio off unless you select another source. So if I go into Bluetooth, for example, it turns the radio off because it's expecting you to uh, connect it to a phone to uh, to play Bluetooth music. Anyway, that's that's the situation there. So dashboard looks cool. Um, you've got time and date widget, the radio widget, Bluetooth um, music that's installed on a USB stick can be played from here. And then you have video files, photos, and the ability to access any files that you actually have on on this head unit. 
Then you have Auto Play, which is for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The dashboard is fairly self-explanatory. I definitely do not like the fact that you can't turn the radio off without actually going into something else, but I guess that's just the way that it was designed. So fairly basic functionality. Now the screen is fine, but you can clearly see that it's a cheap screen. The contrast ratio is very, very poor and everything is got kind of like a like a blur to it. Um, and I assume that it's probably running at 480p, uh, which is just a very low resolution. You don't really need anything bigger for a head unit like this. But obviously, as I deal with a lot of head units all the time, I can definitely notice the difference between this head unit and, and some others. Now, the main selling point of this head unit is, of course, that it does Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So let's connect my phone up to it and uh, see what happens. That's where it says phone loading. Please wait. There we go. And it's, uh, it's playing music already. Now, the interesting thing about this is that once you're in Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, these buttons that show sort of a next and backtrack symbols actually become volume control. And that's good because there is literally no other way to control the volume when you are in Android Auto. So they did actually think about that. And uh, so you do still control your audio via these buttons. And it is full Android Auto, so you have total access to all of the apps uh, that are compatible on your phone. And you know, it, it's fairly quick. So you can just do everything that you need to do. So from an Android Auto perspective, it works fine. Let's try Apple CarPlay. Okay, so. And there we go. So uh, we have a complete Apple CarPlay as well. So it works fine. So Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, just you just plug your phone in and it works. There's no faffing about. It you, literally just works as soon as you plug it in. And that's a real, real positive. And really that's the main use of this head unit. Now, of course, you can use um, it for standard Bluetooth as well. It does have Bluetooth. You can just connect your phone up to it and use it as a basic head unit as well. Although I don't really see the point in that considering it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is significantly better. Let's talk about the audio. Right, so if we go into the settings here and we go into this little uh, equalizer logo here, and you have a bass and a treble, and that's it. There's no specific frequency banding. You can't adjust the audio to exactly how you want it. You have some bass and treble. Now the sound is okay, but it, it, it's not great. I, 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 in fact, it's probably the worst sounding head unit that I've ever heard. And that's saying a lot considering the amount of cheap head units that I test. When you hit the bass up a little bit, the, it just like the, the bass just sounds terrible. It just sounds really, it's just not sharp. It, it's yeah, it's just it's just not very very good at all. And, and the same with the treble. Um, you know, it gets very hissy. It is obviously increasing the higher frequencies to add the treble to the actual audio itself. But my God, it just doesn't sound anywhere near as good as any other head unit that I've tested. And considering that a few weeks ago, I did a review on a chicane head unit and was one of the lowest spec Android head units I've ever tested uh, with one gigabyte of RAM, but it was fairly fast and it had Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on it as well. And it sounded good. This doesn't sound good and the chicane was cheaper. Now I'm not gonna give it any scores because it's not an Android device. So my score system is irrelevant to this. If you have any questions about this head unit uh, or there's another head unit that you'd like me to review, please put something in the comments below and I will see what I can do. And obviously if you like my content, please do subscribe to my channel for more because I do do these kinds of reviews uh, fairly often. Thanks for watching.